In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to change the ignition coils and spark plugs on a 2.4 liter Ecotec engine. We'll be showing you how to do that right after this. Hey guys, Alex here from All For Him Racing and today we're going to be changing the ignition coils and spark plugs on this 2.4 liter Ecotec motor. This happens to be in my Chevy Malibu. It is a 2011, but this applies to a lot of Ecotec engines because these are used in all kinds of different vehicles uh, within GM's family. So we're just going to go ahead and get right to it and show you guys how to do this. So the first step in doing this is we have to remove the plastic cover that actually goes over top of the engine. So the first step is we're going to remove the oil cap. So give that a turn and then lift. That will remove the cap. And then I would make sure to then take a rag and put this into the opening where the cap was. That just keeps any debris and dirt from entering the engine, which would be no good in this case. So the next step I would suggest is you remove the clamp and this hose that connects the air box to this plastic cover. All you need is a flathead screwdriver. So go ahead and loosen this up, making sure not to take it off all the way. I just suggest loosening it up most of the way. Once that's good and loose, you can grab it with your hands and kind of rock it back and forth. And then this will come loose and pop right off the end. The next thing we're going to remove is the little hose that actually attaches just behind the one we removed. In order to do that, we're going to take a big pair of channel locks, if I get the focus, and we're going to simply remove this clamp. So you put one side on right here, one side right here, give that a good pinch. You can then slide it back. These are always a hassle, so even those of us that have worked on this kind of stuff quite a bit still have difficulties with these things, so don't worry or fret if you have difficulties with it. Pry that back, loosen it up, and then this hose will then also slide right on off and tuck it back so it's out of the way. Now this next one is hard to film, so I'm going to do the best that I can, but I do apologize if you guys have difficulty seeing what we're doing here. You can see the screw is actually back in there. So it's actually partially back on this top cover. We're gonna go ahead and sit the camera down and then grab a long flathead screwdriver and remove this screw. So we're gonna take our long flathead and just put it down in here. There is a little bit of a slit in the top of this plastic cover. So if you do end up having an issue, you can actually see the screw right there. I do apologize, this is all very close, but, this is what we got to do to remove this extra clamp. So we're going to loosen this screw here. Again, not wanting to remove it all the way, but loosening it up most of the way. So go ahead and remove the screwdriver. That should be loose. So now that we've got both the clamps and this hose loose, that is all that holds this thing on. There's one little piece that we have to worry about back there but we'll deal with that. It is just a little notch that has to snap in. So the first thing you want to do is you want to grab underneath this cover by where that hose is that we were just removing and we want to apply pressure and lift. Now be careful not to break this cover because it is pretty sensitive. It is only plastic after all. But we're just going to go ahead and gently lift and pry on that. And then that pops up like that. Now we just got to worry about this piece right here. We're going to pull the cover over that way to release that. You can see the little slot. And then that is all that it takes to remove that plastic cover. I would then recommend that you do the exact same thing of taking a shop towel and just putting that into the throttle body. The coils are sitting right here on top. There's four of them because this is a four cylinder engine. Um, so we're going to have to remove these. We're going to do it one by one. So the same process will be used for all of them because they're virtually identical. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is actually clean up any debris that may be sitting on top of the motor right here. As you can see, I've got a little bit of lint, um, some leaves, different things. Let's go ahead and pick up what we can by hand and then we'll use the air compressor to blow off the remaining bits. So I just have a spray nozzle on the end of my air compressor hose. We're just going to go ahead and blow this out. Now 
Now that is why it's important to make sure to plug these two areas that are open to the motor. If you don't want to use an air hose, go ahead and use a shop vac or some other means, but you want to make sure that that area is clear. Now before we remove any other parts, let's make sure that we actually have the right replacement parts. So the first thing we're going to look at is the spark plug. Now this is an AC Delco Professional Iridium spark plug. This was the recommended OEM replacement plug. It is a 41103 if it will ever focus for you guys so you can see it. 41103. Go ahead and pick these up. This was the OEM recommended replacement for this motor. And for the coils, again, AC Delco. And then these are the part numbers for this particular item that I purchased. D522C. 1263-8824. I will provide links to Amazon where I purchased these parts. They are sold individually. I want to say at the time of this video, the uh, coils were about $20 a piece and the spark plugs were five. Again, I will provide a link in the description to these of where I purchased them for you guys to save you a little bit of time. AC Delco is the way to go for OEM replacement with the GM motor. I'm going to show you the more detailed steps on how to remove the first one and then we'll just apply the same method to the next, next three. It is going to be pretty straightforward. What I like to do is remove the connector first before we actually remove the ignition coil. Reason being, when this is firmly mounted, this is just a little bit easier to come apart. So I will take a small flathead screwdriver and push on this little gray tab. This plastic piece needs to get slid back in order for this to be removed. So I'm going to push this with the screwdriver, simply rock this gray piece back and forth, and then this will slide right on out. Now you got to be careful not to lose this, because if you pull too hard, it wouldn't take much to slide down into the engine bay. So now once that is removed, there's this black tab that's right here. And what you need to do is just simply push that black tab, and then use your other hand to help you guide this off, and now the connector is Disconnected and exposed, I like to just tuck that down and out of the way. Next step is we're going to remove the screw that actually holds the ignition coil down. And what you need is a 10 millimeter socket. So we're going to go ahead and place that on firmly and then give it a turn. Now be careful with this, it wouldn't take much to break off a bolt. So if you're having difficulty removing it or feeling like you may actually break something, stop and contact a professional. They know what they're doing and they can help you out. In this case, it came apart real nice. Go ahead and remove that the rest of the way by hand. Or you can continue to use a socket or some other means if you'd like. Remove that bolt entirely out of the way and put it into a little parts buddy. Now with the bolt removed, all we have to do is simply pull up on the ignition coil. So grab it, I find on this side works pretty well. There's a, there's a little bit of a surface under here you can grab. Just simply pull, you'll hear a little pop, and now you can remove the ignition coil. The next step is to remove the spark plug itself. In order to do that, you're going to need a 5 8 deep spark plug socket. And this particular one actually has the rubber piece in the inside. That makes this a lot easier if you have that. So you're going to slide this down and slide it by eye or just do it by feel. Make sure it's on firm and then go ahead and torque it off. Now if you're using a long extension like this, you want to be sure to keep it as straight and in line as you can. Look at that. That needs change bad. The next step is to get the spark plug itself prepped and ready to go. So what we want to do is check the gap here. So the gap is simply the point from the tip on the spark plug to the bottom of the metal piece right here. And according to the owner's manual, that has to be 40 thousandths of an inch. And so what you can do is get this handy little tool from your local auto parts store. And this is the check gap on your spark plugs. The way it works is you simply put this in the gap, rotate it until you get to the point of where it stops. In this case, it is sitting right at 40 thousandths of an inch as it should. So this was pre-gapped, supposed to be, but it's always a good idea to sanity check and make sure that that is good. Next step, I would suggest using some anti-seize lubricant. Um, Permatex is a good brand. I'll put a link in the description for that if you guys need it. 
And what we're going to do is just simply put a little bit of that on the threads. Why do we want to do this? Well, this engine has aluminum heads. This spark plug has steel for the threads. Aluminum and steel, long term, did not get along very well. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in there just to keep them from corroding together or having some kind of an issue. So for this, this particular one's a little bit bigger, comes with its own little brush. We're going to go ahead and give it a good little mix. If it was in a tube, it wouldn't be that big a deal. You can see it's gray looking, a little bit of a silver metallic look. We're just going to brush that onto the threads very lightly, not being too carried away but enough that it's adequate and going to fill in the threads when we screw this into the head. And if you do end up with any excess, just go ahead and use a rag and remove it. So I'm going to wipe it off from the very end here just to make sure that that doesn't interfere at all with the plug. So the next step is to simply put the spark plug back into the motor, the new one that is. And because this particular socket has the rubber piece, we're just going to go ahead and insert this plug into it, making sure that everything lines up. Okay, so that is into place. And now I would recommend you do this step by hand. Now be careful not to touch the edges uh, if you can at all. I would say turn it reverse just a tad, make sure the threads are lined up, then go ahead and start screwing this in. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Screw it until it is firm and in place and once it is snugged up we'll then grab the socket put that on top and torque this in the rest of the way now I'm glad that this happened on the video so I can show you but the socket unfortunately got stuck down inside here because that rubber piece got a little stuck. So I just took a pair of needle nose pliers, simply grab onto the socket and pull it out. Next, we're gonna put in the replacement coil. Now, as, as you guys recall, it is an AC Delco part. However, it does say Denso, which is the same brand that was used on the line, the factory line when they built these things. So make sure to check these numbers and that they line up with the one that you removed. If it does, then you're good to go. So what we're going to do is simply place this into place. Now you can see this one actually came with the bolt, the new bolt with it. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of pull that out a little bit. And we're going to slide this down into the pocket. You're going to start to feel it come into contact with that spark plug. Push that down firmly and make sure that's good and snug. And then at that point you can push this bolt down. Again, I like to turn it left a little bit so you can feel the thread engage and then start to turn it to the right. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Again, I like to do things by hand first. Go ahead and screw this down until it's snug. You can grab your socket wrench, snug that up, and then the new one is bolted into place. We're going to go ahead and get this connector put back into place. So again, you want to make sure your tab is facing up. We're going to slide this over onto it. The coil, make sure it gives a good pop. Heard that. And then we need to grab the gray piece that we had removed previously. Slide that in lo into location. Again, making sure the flats are facing up. You have to wiggle a little bit, hear a good pop, and then that is done. So there you go guys, at this point we have replaced one ignition coil and spark plug. Now we just need to do the same thing for three more times and then we'll go ahead and put the cover back on. So we're going to speed this video up and show you guys what to do next.
Okay, so now we've replaced all four ignition coils and four spark plugs. Now all that's left to do is to put the plastic cover back on. So first thing I would suggest you do is take some white lithium grease or some kind of a lubricant and lube up this rubber piece right here. So that way it more easily slides over to the throttle body. The next thing to do is also look back here. If you remember we had this little rubber piece. Well this can actually pop off. There's a little bit of a peg there. And so we're just going to go ahead and replace this rubber connector right into that slot. And there's also another one that was right here that I forgot all about when I took this apart which is right here. So make sure to look for those two when you take it apart. Um, now also, this is your only chance to remove this rag out of the throttle body. So make sure to do that because otherwise you're going to have some problems. So what you want to do is sit this down into location as best you can. Use your hands to kind of guide over top of that throttle body. You've got to have that rubber piece fit back over the throttle body. So we're going to line that up first. And I'll wiggle and walk its way down until it's firmly in place. Then we're going to line up this oil fill location right here. Line these two tabs up on the back. Give those both a good firm push. They are now latched on the back. There's not a real nice firm snap, but you can feel it. And this is in place. So now we just got to tighten up the screw here and tighten up this screw. I've already showed you guys how to do this with the nice camera view, so we're just going to go ahead and do the reverse, which is tightening up this clamp by using the flathead screwdriver and turning the screw on the clamp itself. We're just going to turn this until it's good and tight. Next, we're going to do this big rubber hose over here that connected the plastic cover to the air intake, making sure to line up this little groove here, little slot. Once again, taking your flathead screwdriver and tightening up the clip. Okay guys, almost done. We're going to go ahead and put this rubber hose back in place. Take your channel locks or pliers, clamp this clamp together, put it back in the location, and that is back together. Remove the rag out of your oil fill, replace the cap, and that's it. We are done. So that is how we change the ignition coils and spark plugs on a 2.4 liter Ecotec motor. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, give us a big thumbs up. Certainly would appreciate it. As I already mentioned, I will provide links in the description below for the replacement parts that we used in this video. I would definitely encourage you to check at your local auto parts store or online to make sure that the parts you're going to use are the proper fit for your vehicle. This video is purely meant for a guide, but as always, try to be as helpful as we can, so I will provide links for the parts that we use in the description. Um, if anything we've ever done has been helpful to you guys, certainly it would be awesome if you'd be a subscriber of ours. So hit the little subscribe button down below and hit the bell so you're indicated when we get new videos uploaded. And as always, we want you guys to have a great day. So make sure to have a great day. And until the next video, we'll talk to you later, guys.